Most people have heard the question, but few have ever heard a clear factual answer. When it comes to swallowing semen, should you, should you not? And what really happens in the body? I am Dr. Emma Blake, urologist and men's health expert. My goal is to bring clarity and calm science to subjects that are often misunderstood, whispered about, or surrounded by cultural myths. Today, we are going to talk openly and respectfully about the act of swallowing semen, what it is biologically, what the research actually says about its potential effects, what the real health risks are, and how to make an informed, healthy choice that feels right for you. This conversation is not about judgment, shame, or opinion. It is about knowledge. The more we understand the human body, the easier it becomes to make decisions based on facts instead of fear or misinformation. So, let us start with what semen actually is. Despite the way it is often portrayed, semen is not made up primarily of sperm. In fact, sperm cells, called spermatozoa, account for only about 5 to 10 percent of the total volume of an ejaculation. The remaining 90 to 95 percent is a thick, complex fluid called seminal plasma. This plasma is a highly sophisticated biological fluid. It is not simply a carrier for sperm cells. It is an evolutionary support system designed to protect, nourish, and energize sperm on their journey toward fertilization. It is produced by several glands in the male reproductive system, including the seminal vesicles and the prostate gland, and it contains an astonishing variety of substances. Let us break down what is inside this fluid. The first important ingredient is fructose, which is a type of sugar that acts as a direct energy source for sperm cells, giving them the fuel they need to move. Next, there are proteins and enzymes. These serve several functions. They protect the sperm cells from the acidic environment of the vagina and help regulate the texture of the fluid itself. After ejaculation, semen begins to thicken and then it liquefies again. This process is managed by enzymes in the seminal plasma that allow the sperm to move freely at the right moment. Seminal plasma also contains minerals and vitamins such as zinc, vitamin C, and vitamin B12. Zinc is vital for sperm stability and DNA integrity, while vitamin C and vitamin B12 act as antioxidants, protecting cells from oxidative stress. Beyond these nutrients, Semen contains a wide variety of hormones and neuroactive chemicals, compounds that also exist in the human brain and bloodstream. These include cortisol, which is known as the body's stress hormone and helps regulate immune function, melatonin, which plays a role in controlling sleep cycles, serotonin, which is one of the key chemicals responsible for mood and emotional balance, and oxytocin, often referred to as the bonding hormone which is associated with trust, intimacy, and emotional connection. From an evolutionary perspective, this complex cocktail of substances makes sense. Every component has a role in supporting reproduction. But when this same biological fluid enters the mouth or the digestive tract, the context changes completely. Once semen is swallowed, the components are exposed to the digestive system rather than the reproductive system. That means the enzymes, sugars, and proteins will mostly be broken down by stomach acid and absorbed just like nutrients from food. However, because some hormones and signaling molecules can theoretically be absorbed through the mucous membranes in the mouth and throat, scientists have wondered whether any of them could have subtle effects on the body. This question has led to some fascinating, if still limited, research. One of the most widely discussed studies came from the State University of New York at Albany in 2002. Researchers surveyed almost 300 sexually active college-aged women about their sexual practices and their mood. The study used a standard psychological assessment called the Beck Depression Inventory to measure depressive symptoms. The participants were divided into groups based on their partner's condom use. One group reported that they never used condoms, another said they sometimes used them, and the final group reported consistent condom use every time. The results were striking. The women who were directly exposed to their partner's semen, that is those who did not use condoms, 
reported fewer depressive symptoms and higher overall well-being. The researchers proposed that the mood-related compounds found in semen, such as serotonin, oxytocin, and other neurotransmitters, might be absorbed through the vaginal or oral mucosa and have a mild antidepressant effect. However, it is very important to understand what this finding does and does not mean. This was an observational study. It showed correlation, not causation. In other words, there could be many other explanations. The women who did not use condoms may have been in longer-term relationships, may have had higher levels of emotional intimacy, or may have been experiencing other lifestyle factors that improved mood. So while the research is interesting, it does not prove that semen acts as an antidepressant or that ingesting it can improve mental health. Another topic that researchers have looked at is sleep and relaxation. Because melatonin, the hormone that helps regulate sleep, is present in semen, some have suggested that it could theoretically contribute to post-sex drowsiness or relaxation. However, the amount present is extremely small and unlikely to have any measurable impact. The sense of calm after sex is far more likely to be caused by endorphins, oxytocin release, and the natural drop in stress hormones after orgasm. Oxytocin, the so-called bonding hormone, deserves special mention. It is one of the most powerful chemicals for promoting feelings of closeness, trust, and emotional connection. It is released during hugging, touching, childbirth, and breastfeeding. During intimacy, both partners experience oxytocin release, and that shared effect is part of what strengthens bonds between them. Some scientists have suggested that ingesting semen might enhance this effect because of the oxytocin it contains. Again, while it is an interesting theory, there is no solid evidence that swallowing semen produces additional oxytocin effects beyond what is already generated through touch, intimacy, and orgasm itself. Another area of investigation involves the immune system and pregnancy. Several studies have explored a concept called immunological tolerance. A woman's immune system is designed to protect her body by attacking foreign cells, but a fetus is technically speaking, partly foreign because half its genetic material comes from the father. In rare cases, the maternal immune system may respond too aggressively, leading to complications such as preeclampsia, which is a serious condition involving high blood pressure during pregnancy. Some studies have suggested that repeated, long-term exposure to a partner's semen may help the woman's immune system build tolerance to that partner's specific genetic markers, lowering the risk of an immune-related reaction during pregnancy. Interestingly, this effect has been observed both through vaginal exposure and, in limited data, oral exposure. Again, this is an emerging field of study, and while it is fascinating, it is not medical advice or a recommendation. Swallowing semen should not be seen as a way to prevent pregnancy complications. At this point, we have looked at some of the potential benefits. Now, it is equally important to understand the real and sometimes serious risks. The most immediate and well-documented risk is infection. The idea that oral sex is completely safe is a myth. Semen is a body fluid, and like blood or saliva, it can carry viruses and bacteria. Human immunodeficiency virus, herpes simplex virus, human papillomavirus, chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis can all be transmitted through oral contact. Many of these infections cause no symptoms in the carrier, meaning a partner can look perfectly healthy and still transmit an infection. The tissues of the mouth and throat are especially vulnerable because they contain delicate mucous membranes and tiny micro tears that are invisible to the naked eye. These create openings that viruses can use to enter the bloodstream. Human papillomavirus deserves special attention. Some strains are known to increase the risk of cancers of the throat, tongue, and tonsils. These cancers have been rising steadily over the last two decades, and oral transmission of human papillomavirus is a significant contributing factor. Other infections, such as gonorrhea and chlamydia, can infect the throat, causing soreness, 
swelling, and in some cases, more severe complications if left untreated. A second, much rarer risk is allergic reaction. A small number of people have a condition known as seminal plasma hypersensitivity. Their immune system reacts to proteins in semen as though they were harmful invaders. This can cause localized itching, swelling, or redness. And in extreme cases, an anaphylactic reaction that requires emergency treatment. A third consideration is overall health and lifestyle. The composition of semen reflects the body of the person who produces it. Alcohol, recreational drugs, tobacco, medications, and diet all influence the chemical makeup of bodily fluids. In theory, substances consumed by one partner could be transmitted in small amounts to the other, although this is generally minimal. So, what does this all mean? How should we think about this act? Swallowing semen is a personal choice. It is not inherently harmful when both partners are healthy and free of infection, but it also has no proven health benefits. The idea that it can act as an antidepressant, a sleep aid, or a fertility booster is speculative at best. The most important factor is communication and safety. Openly discuss sexual health history, recent testing, and any medical conditions before engaging in any exchange of bodily fluids. If there is uncertainty, protection such as condoms or dental barriers can greatly reduce risk. If you choose to engage in this act, it should always be within a foundation of mutual consent, trust, and respect. If you choose not to, that decision is equally valid and should be respected without question. The goal of this conversation is not to persuade anyone in either direction, but to provide you with information so you can make an informed, confident, and healthy choice. In summary, semen is a biologically rich fluid containing sugars, proteins, hormones, and trace chemicals that evolved to support reproduction. When swallowed, these components are mostly digested like any other nutrient. The potential benefits are speculative and not medically proven, while the risks, primarily infection and rare allergic reaction, are real, but manageable with honesty, testing, and protection. In the end, knowledge is what allows us to move beyond taboo. Understanding how our bodies work helps us care for them. And talking about subjects like this removes the unnecessary shame that so often surrounds them. Thank you for approaching this conversation with an open mind. When we replace silence with science, we empower ourselves to make safer, more thoughtful choices about our health, our relationships, and our sexuality. And for men who want natural support for the physical side, performance, stamina, and confidence, there are two options I'm often asked about. For a mild boost in erection strength, I recommend an organic watermelon extract rich in L-citrulline, which supports nitric oxide and healthy blood flow. For a stronger boost, I recommend an advanced performance formula that combines acarian, tonkat ali, fenugreek, nettle root, and citrulline to support erections, stamina, testosterone, and prostate health. You'll find the links in the comments and in the video description. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.